Welcome to Martha Runs the World, a podcast with a new take on running, fitness, and all things health-oriented. I'm Martha Hughes, your host, and each week I present a new topic that is of interest to all runners. If you would like to do more to help out the show, consider becoming a Patreon patron. For as little as $2 a month, you can show your support and it would be a huge help. You'll get your name read aloud on the show as well as get to hear extra episodes that will never be aired anyplace else. If you give at the $5 or $10 a month levels, I'll send you free gear. Go to the website MarthaRunsTheWorld.com and click on the Patreon button. Thank you. Welcome to episode 160 of Martha Runs the World. We've all heard of the Barkley Marathons, Western States, Badwater 135, Hurt, Leadville, Hard Rock. Some of these are very popular, they're very well known, and they're extremely difficult to get into. Runners can try for years to get into Western States or Hard Rock, for example. You can try over and over for years and not get in. Let me break down the odds for getting into Western States. As an example, even though the 2020 race was canceled because of COVID, obviously, if it had been run, this is how it breaks down. Each runner gets one ticket for every 100K or 100 mile that they run that's a qualifying race within the year. For each year a runner doesn't get in, they get additional tickets depending on how many years they haven't gotten in consecutively, so it adds up. But if they only have one ticket, and if it's that runner's first year, like in 2020, that runner's odds of getting into Western states is 1.267%. That's it. <laughs> that's, that's the odds of them getting in. 1.267%. Not very good, is it? I mean, it's about the odds of winning the lottery, right? <laughs> not, not really, but kinda. If that runner has two tickets... If the race in 2020 had been held and the runner did run and had two tickets, that runner's odds of getting in would be 2.518%. So doubled, but still not very good. So even with a couple of tickets, your odds of getting in and running Western states just are not great. It doesn't get any better with the other ones like Hard Rock, or Hurt in Hawaii. The odds are get, of getting into these very famous and very popular races are not great at all. I thought it would be really fun to have an episode where I highlight one race per month in different states in the U.S. and talk about maybe some lesser-known ultras that you can check out. And I just kept this to the U.S. because I can, I'll can. i do another episode where we talk about international races and uh, ultra races. And we'll talk, I'll talk about that in another show because there's so many of them. Because there's other sh- international races that are also difficult to get into. You know, Tour de Gence is very difficult to get into. So we'll talk about lesser known international races in another show. So I'm going to do one race per month. There are many ultras in the U.S. that you haven't heard of that aren't in your area, that maybe the ones in your area that you have heard of. But if I'm not in that area, I don't know about them. And they're really cool. They aren't all 100 milers. Some are shorter. Some are longer. So I picked one for each month of the year, and I thought they would be pretty fun to talk about. I'll put links to all of the races on the website so you'll be able to see, check all of them out. Some of them would have just happened after the episode. Some of them it's too late to enter this year, but you can think about them for next year. So I think that's pretty cool. 
So for January, this just happened, so you can think about it for next January. The Forgotten Florida race has a 100-mile, 45-mile, and 15-mile entry. And I'm going to read off for each race. I'm going to read off what the race company says about it. Flat isn't easy, and it sure as heck isn't ugly. This race is meant to take you to places even locals have not been to. Explore 99% of the trails in Tosohatchee, Charles Bronson State Forest. There's a Charles Bronson State Forest? How cool is that? Okay, Seminole Ranch, Little Big Econ State Forest, and then some. This is old Florida. This is forgotten Florida. Now, this race, they, they were saying this race takes only a very limited number of runners. And if I lived anywhere near Florida, I'd do this race. It sounds pretty amazing. And it happened just recently in late January. And I'd be excited if I lived near there to do it next year. In February, we have the Cabin Fever 50K in West Virginia. Looking for a burly winter run? Tow the starting line and test yourself against the elements on this 50K point-to-point ultra across New River Gorge National Park in the depths of winter. You should see the pictures on the website. It is ultra beautiful. Starting in downtown Fayetteville and making your way south to Ace Adventure Resort. This route has a little bit of everything, including expansive views on high ridgeline single track and riverside trails, on the banks of the New River, sharing much of the Rim to River 100 course. The Cabin Fever 50K can be the perfect training run while also providing a whole new winter trail running experience. Join us for the first and only winter ultra in New River Gorge. Old Pueblo Endurance runs 50 mile, 25 mile in Arizona. Started by a group of local trail runners, all friends, who are still friends, two of whom were married in these mountains. Unknowingly, they were actually early pioneers of trail running in Arizona, a sport that has grown by leaps and bounds in recent years. Since its inception in 1985, Old Pueblo has taken on many forms and has had different routes, starts, finishes, distances, race directors, and its share of ups and downs, but it has always been run on the flanks of the beautiful Santa Rita Mountains, and so it continues. This is, now this is my comment. This is really beautiful country and a terrific race, and I would love to do this race someday. This is something that I, this is on my bucket list of the, of runs, little talk, Martha. This is on my bucket list of runs to do. The next one is also on my on my list because I just love the name so much. Trail Trashed 100 Mile 100K 50 Mile 50K Marathon Half Marathon 10K and 5K in Nevada for April. The routes we created are adventurous, gorgeous, challenging, and trashy. Have no fear. Our races are wild and crazy with loud music, high-energy volunteers, and memories for a lifetime. Trash those trail legs on many of these trails that will be raced on for the first time with us. The terrain is varied with wide-groomed trails and challenging single track. The views are spectacular. Gorgeous mountains and valleys around every corner. Race directors and military veterans are always steeply discounted. Thank you for your service. We are known for putting on lively and energetic races, race shirts and medals for all runners. That sounds really cool. That's another one I want to do. And in May, this has the best name. Okay, this wins best name, best race name. And I think this is the first year they're putting it on too. Thunder Bunny Trail Races, 50K, 25K, 12K in Ohio. Athens County's first ever ultra marathon, the Thunder Bunny 50K, comes to Stroud's Run State Park and will show off some of the best trails in the region and give participants a great experience, whether you are a first timer or a trail veteran. It sounds like a new race, it does, and it sounds like a lot of fun. 
Ohio had some great runners, and it's about time they had some more great trail races. The Chattanooga Mountain Stage Race in Tennessee for June. Chattanooga Mountain Stage Race, that's hard to say, consists of three exciting days of trail running in the beautiful mountains surrounding Chattanooga. This challenging, yet attainable, series includes 18 easy miles on Raccoon Mountain for day one, 20 technical but amazing miles on Signal Mountain for day two, and 22 miles grand finale on Lookout Mountain for day three. And that sounds like a really good alternative for those who don't or cannot commit to the Vol State, a Tennessee stage race. A three-day stage race is not so epic for those that want to do that in June. Okay, July, we have a little bit tougher race in Washington, the Sawtooth Ridge 50 Mile. You name it, the North Cascades have it. Come experience it all firsthand at the inaugural Sawtooth Ridge 50 Mile. Backcountry tour of all things wonderful and beautiful about the Cascade Range. This is a beautiful and tough race. And the trails in that part of the world are as tough and hard as they are beautiful. That is for sure. In August, we have the Hurl, that's H-U-R-L, Elkhorn 50 Mile, 50K and Half Marathon in Montana. Montana's oldest trail ultra, established in 1989, held annually on the first Saturday in August in the remote, rugged, and wild Elkhorn Mountains near Helena, Montana. All portions of that of the course are remote. You may encounter horseback riders, bike riders, or hikers, and deer, elk, moose, and bear. And all trails are for non-motorized use only. The primitive road portions of the 50-mile and 50K courses may be used by ATV and four-wheel drive vehicles, but access is still very difficult. Our race has the low-key, friendly, laid-back atmosphere that is typical of Montana. We don't have and aren't interested in the hype of some of today's large ultra-marathon events. Our goal is to provide participants with memories of Montana backcountry mountain running. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'd love that event. That sounds really, really cool. And then it's really tough, too. They also suggest that this is not for beginners, and it's a really tough event. And it just sounds just beautiful and really fun. September, it is the Kilkenny Ridge Race, 50 mile and 25 mile in New Hampshire. This course is wild and woolly, so expect it to feel very remote. This is not an entry-level course. Another tough one. They don't mark the course, and they make it as natural as possible So and explain that there are signs on the course to follow, and they give everybody a map, and they tell everybody to download the GPS onto their watch or phone because they don't mark the course. They expect you to follow the signs that are already there. That's a little tricky. <laughs> so you got to be very aware of things going on. In October, the bogus 50-50 is a 50-miler, 50 50K, and 15-miler in Idaho. All courses include multiple uphill and downhill sections. The terrain is of moderate difficulty, providing a challenge to runners, but not too hard for first-timers. A portion of the proceed will benefit the Ridge to Rivers trail system to help maintain the spectacular trails in the Boise foothills. So that's pretty cool. Squatchy Leftovers Trail Race is in November in New Jersey. And that's a 50K, 26K, 10K, and 5K. The Thanksgiving feast is over. Black Friday is done. Now it's time for you to get off the couch, leave the stores, and head over to the trails. Operation Chill Out will use our donation to purchase warm clothing for homeless veterans in New Jersey. Awesome. Very, very awesome. And in December, it's Go Big is the race in Hawaii. The 260 miler, 100 miler, 100K, and 50K. Go Big was created for local runners at their request 
for more long distance races and it is a way for us at Hawaii Mountain Running to help benefit Hawaii Wildlife Fund. This no frills road course will allow you to do a big island pilgrimage of extreme or extremely extreme lengths. This race is not for everyone, and we understand if it's not for you. This event is to help us bring in the new year fundraise for our favorite nonprofit on Big Island, Hawaii, and is to encourage runners to go big and try a distance they never before have attempted. And like I said, all links will be on the website, and I encourage you to check it out. And check out the smaller local ultras instead of going for always going for the big ones and be disappointed that you can't get into hard rock or you can't get into western states there are plenty plenty of amazing ultras all over the country and they rock just as much really maybe they don't have the prestige it isn't even just the bragging factor who cares who the bleep cares i I don't swear on this podcast but who cares is is it is that such a big deal? I don't know. We're adults, really. Is that really a thing? Not to me. I'm not really into that stuff. So I I think that supporting some of these local race companies is a lot more important. They really need it, especially after almost two years of no races at all. Support some of the smaller races. You might find you might you like them more. Who knows? So it's February and we're getting into this into the heart of winter here. How is your training going along? I either get the approval or the not approval to start running this week and I'm I I think she's going to say okay, I can start running. I already signed up for a race and I already have my my race is picked out that I want to do this year, so yeah, I'm going to say I I'm, I will start running this week. <laughs> I hope she does. I I don't want to, like, be all prepared for it and her say, no, no, you're not ready. But I think so. I've been walking a lot. I walked over 100 miles in January, and I've been walking a lot. I walk to work at least two or three times a week now. I walk at least three miles every day, and sometimes four and five miles, and sometimes more. I went on this amazing hike in the headlands this past week. It was so wonderful. I I walked over eight miles and just saw, it was just really nice. And I felt really good afterwards. And it it was just, just really, really nice. I'm going to do that again um, this next weekend. It's hard when you work every other weekend. I, I can't do that every weekend, but I can do that every other weekend. But I get in my miles when I can. And I get my workouts in when I can. I take little breaks throughout the day and get get some workouts in. Like um, one of my past guests, Matt Shiverly said, he said if you can get mini mic or micro workouts in, that's good too. And I get do get micro workouts in throughout the day. If that's all you can get in, get three to five minute micro workouts in. That's that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. Do that if you can. And I do that throughout the day. I work. Two days a week, I I work 12-hour days. So it's not like you can get a big workout in in a 12-hour day. But I can take five-minute breaks, go do some do some squats, do some lunges, do some things like that. I can get that done. I can go quick and, and do a plank for 30, 30 seconds for 30 seconds. I can do that kind of stuff. I can do some stretches. I can do, like I said, I can do some squats. I can do some jumping jacks. I can do some squat hops. I can do all kinds of things like that and at least be active and and be working out. And that helps an awful lot to keep myself going and to keep myself active and to keep my heart rate at least up a little bit and into more a little bit aerobic area. And that that helps a lot. It helps me from just sitting all day. And then I go out and, and walk around the block a few times during one of my breaks that also helps to get my step count up too. So I'm not sitting all day because I could be sitting all day. I've done that before, especially when my hip hurt. But if you can do that too and keep yourself busy, that is a big help. 
I've already done a total episode on this before called Look at Me or Look at Me on people who use social media in running to show off or that they're maybe unsure of themselves so they use it for bragging rights or things like that. But I still see I, I still see people saying, um, like I saw this poster say something like, and I have to bring this up now because it's the end of the episode. And I, I have to get this out of my system. So this so this runner brings in social media. See, he says, Well, can I qualify for Boston? Cut two hours off my time and train for a fifty miler and bulk up. Uh, no, (laughs) choose one. You're doing three different things here, dude. Really, this was a real person doing this. He wants to qualify for Boston and run two hours faster. He wants to train for a 50 miler and he wants to get more muscles. Seriously, this was a real person. Choose one, dude. You're all over the place here. He was serious about this. He wasn't joking. He he was absolutely serious. You got to choose one. You're all over the place. And, and it really got me to thinking about my own goals. We have to focus. And it got me to thinking about my last guest on our goals. There was an old saying, and I rephrased it, but the old saying was, you can't serve two masters. I rephrased that saying, you can't run on two paths you have to choose a path this guy has three things he wants to do he wants to qualify for boston by going two hours faster he wants to train for a 50 miler and he wants to be more muscular well that's three paths he wants to run on at the same time how do you physically run on three paths at the same time you can't you Physically can't. That goes against physics, right? So he's got himself all over the place and he doesn't really have a goal. So he doesn't have a goal focus. So therefore, he's not going to accomplish anything. I realized that myself, I was kind of wildly all over the place as far as my weight loss goes. I am doing well with my workouts. I'm doing well with getting close to being able to run but I was not focused as far as losing weight. So I had to get myself more focused and my goal more honed and more set as far as losing weight. So I've done that. I've done that for a week. I've lost five pounds in the first week. I know it's only the first week and it's usually easiest in the first week, but I've done that and now I know what I need to do and I'm, I am working on that and I know I can do that. And I'm going to, check in and let you know what's going on with that as I work towards that goal. But if we have something that we want to accomplish, we have to focus and figure out how to do it and set our minds to it. We can't be all over the place. And my mind kind of works all over the place. I get distracted easily. It's like, look, a squirrel. (laughs) That's me. And I can't be distracted. I have to know what I want to do and what I need to do when trying to accomplish this, my weight loss goal, when I go to Trader Joe's, I can't be distracted by the cookies and the candy and the and the wonderful yummy things. I, I have to be away from those and I have to be concentrated on what I need to accomplish as far as eating right all the time. I can't be planning myself, oh, well, I'm going to use those just for working out, just for my, my long walks and when I start running. No, that's because that's a lie. That's a lie. <laughs> That's how my mind works. It tricks me into thinking that, no, that's not really how it's going to work. I have to be concentrated. I have to figure out what I need for my meals, what I'm going to eat for my meals. I have to plan ahead. I have to plan them all out and plan my eating ahead of time. That way I know what I'm going to eat ahead of time, and that way it, that way everything is all set, and I'm ready to go, and there are no surprises, and I know exactly what's going on. It works for me. It works, and I have to have delicious food. Like tonight I had this wonderful fresh wild caught salmon. It was amazing. I had it with some fresh green bell peppers and some onions that I sauteed together. And I had some fresh parsnips and it was wonderful. It was excellent dinner. Filled me up. All I needed. It's great. You have to figure out what you want and 
focus in on it and make it a goal and make it make it a real goal make it for the here and now so that you know you can achieve it that is my advice to you and you can listen to last week's episode with Glenn Daniels if you haven't because he gives some really good advice and I've taken it to heart and I put it into my every day because it it just makes so much sense and it, it changed my life really as far as setting my goals I really needed to hear that all right that is it and please become a patreon patron that would really help me out a lot remember there is a beginning running series beginning runners series on youtube that i'm doing and there are four episodes up and if yeah the fourth is up this week and if you have friends that want to begin running and they just want to start out walking it's just in the walking phase right now so go ahead and have them go to the martha runs the world youtube page and it's up and they can check it out and yeah that's is going on and everything else can be checked out on the martha runs the world.com website page and if you have a race report you want to send to me about a race you've just done please do send email me at martha runs the world at gmail.com and send me your name the race name the date where it was and why it was so much fun and i'd love to read it on the air okay And until next week, let's tie up our shoelaces and go for a run.